Hello, everyone. Uh, Tuan, are you there? Yes, Professor Bombard, I'm here. Okay. Uh, so turn on your, your camera. Oh, okay. Sorry. You, you, you can start anytime. We are ready. Although uh, people people are coming. Uh, we have 31 people. Okay. So we will start now. Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. Let's uh, you share my screen. Yeah. And you see my presentation? Yes. 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 Okay. So good afternoon for uh, everyone. I will continue our uh, lecture, lectures in, for the course Integrated Reservoir and Production Modeling. Uh, this lecture is related for integration. I will talk, I will explain more details about uh, what is integration, what is important, show some examples. But the idea is how we can integrate reserve and production system models and, and how Freud has had shown for us in the last uh, presentation, we are uh, going to integrate with facilities too. Um, how is the purpose of this lecture? Um, we want to present integration concepts, review a mathematical model to represent integrated model, and show applications of this uh, methodology. Um, let's first think a bit about the petroleum production system. Um, in, the, in the previous uh, lectures, we described uh, how of uh, how po uh, each part of my production system, including the reservoir model, well model, uh, pipelines model, topside model, and uh, for that then don't um, uh, follow it, the previous lectures. The idea. Of uh, for you, is think about the physics behind the, 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 the behavior of the fluids flowing from the reservoir, flowing by the tubing, flowing along the pipelines, uh, reaching the platform, being, uh, being separated, compressed, pumped. So the idea is how to uh, how to model this, uh, this whole system, because um, you verify in the previous lectures, this is a very complicated system, because reservoir has your physics behind, the pipes has your physics, uh, top sides has your own um, characteristics about the physics. So the idea is trying to, <coughs> How we can model this kind of problem? Um, let's talk a bit about the petroleum uh, production system. I told you, uh, reservoir is a subsurface body of rock having sufficient porous permeability to store and transmit fluids. Okay, for part of us, this is the common issue in terms of study or or even work. Uh, and a system of wells that is the perforations to access the reservoir at various 
locations and, and the, the tubings connected to the well heads. We have the gathering system. It's a pipeline network that transports and controls the flow of fluids from the wells until the surface and top site facilities. And uh, as we already uh, talked about in there, in, in these facilities for fluid separation, processing, and storage. So, how is the idea, idea about integration? Is integrate all of the systems to obtain the whole behavior of our field production. Okay, uh, each if event I can um, promote inside the, the platform, it can how it affects the reserve forecasting, um, how the the, the 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 change of water cut in in the oil production, uh, producing wells affect my gathering system. And so the idea is how to um, evaluate the, 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 the whole behavior. Okay, let's uh, think in, in these terms. Integration is how I connect each part of my petroleum production system. What is important to verify this dynamic coupling? The coupling is the idea from the numerical, the, the computational method, or a mathematical method to coupling these different wells dy uh, dynamically. How is the proposed? Uh, th this coupling uh, can give us the pressure, the rate, um, an energy, as we oops, uh, verified in the last lecture, but almost the pressure interaction between the surface and subsurface, and even uh, between different reservoirs, because sometimes we are producing from different reservoirs. Okay, uh, we can evaluate uh, the eighteen. The, the treatment of the mixture of different fluids from different reservoirs, uh, or even the appropriate treatment for uh, separate um, uh, uh, streams of fluids, okay? Evaluating several aspects, your um, phase behavior, uh, questions related to flow assurance, um, questions related uh, now in terms of the combustion of part of, of the fluid, of the produced fluid, for example, natural gas. So uh, the idea is to evaluate it dynamically. Uh, of course, our units, uh, even for production and injection units, are um, uh, ruled by operational restrictions. And how I told in the previous presentation, sometimes we have already defined these restrictions in terms of the size of the equipment. But is po there, are, there are some possibilities to change these restrictions depending on how you operate these equipment. So that's the idea to try to bring um, these uh, the, the, uh, these models, uh, especially from top sides, inside the, the the integrated model. And something that is very interesting. In some uh, some fields, when you have a lot of um, between wells, many folds, or else we have a very very complicated network. This kind of uh, tool can help us to 
identify uh, bottlenecks and back pressures in the system. And it can allow us to um, remove this kind of uh, pressure losses and increase our production. And the main objectives of integration are uh, starting with evaluating the, posi the, the positioning of wells or maybe elimination of unnecessary drilling or even uh, evaluate new opportunities for uh, infill drilling and in terms of the reserve aspects. Um, other point that is important is uh, the adequacy of production systems because sometimes we have um, facilities that have um, um, uh, a restrictive um, uh, rate for fluids or for uh, injection and some and how to explain how how forecast the need of injection or uh, the need for separation we need to have this integrated evaluation and of course and the final we want to maximize the total production of the fields and the net and some economic parameter as net present value of the projects or even in we have um, uh, already state projects. We want to maximize um, the production and the recovery along the, the life cycle of the field. And now we are including an uh, important point that are minimizing greenhouse gas emissions, as we already uh, talked about. And how to, for example, how to define how is the emission of, of my uh, surface facilities? So we need to include and um, size the reservoir, the, the pumps, tubings, and so on. Okay, that's the idea. Um, how is the challenges we are uh, facing now? Uh, the first is related for, in terms of reservoir, okay? We have, um, in some fields around the world, we have multiple reservoirs sharing platforms, okay? Uh, and the idea is how I, I share my platforms, how I purify, uh, how I use, um, periodization from the wells, uh, how wells are open, uh, producing more than others because I want to maximize my production and generally I have um, restriction in the platforms or in the, in the pipelines or the gas lines. So the idea is how to evaluate especially in the case I have a lot of reservoirs with different fluids flowing into the platform. And it is one question we want to... Other um, challenge we have observed in, in, in the petroleum field exploration is related to subsurface facilities. The oil companies, the energy companies, are uh, focused in uh, bring some equipment of the top side to the the the, the seabed. Okay, um, for example, subsea separation. Um, subsea busting, subsea reinjection, uh, manifolds. The idea is um, bring part of the equipments to the subsurface, um, allowing to increase the capacity of the platforms, um, trying to fast. Uh, 
trying to simplify top side demands and the idea is how to cons come to verify the the capacity or the uh, yeah uh, uh, if this technology is, uh, uh, is interesting or not for my field um, other possibility to integration is when I have com complex production and injection systems, especially in top sides. And it's more common in oil field, in onshore fields, I have very complicated networks. And, or I have uh, a system very near from a, a, a gas plant or, or, or the um, facility to processing fluids. So the idea is integration could bring the, the, the answers faster for the, the engineers. And something um, is correlated to questions about uh, green, uh, greenhouse gas emissions is related to offshore energy systems. Because some companies are thinking to um, substitute the, the gas turbines, as Fredas showed for us, uh, for other uh, energy uh, source systems. For example, wind farms or, or even bring uh, energy from the coast. So how to evaluate this? We need to integrate all this uh, complexity to, to be able to calculate how is the benefit to use this kind of solution. Let's see the, a basic problem, okay? We will return from our uh, case. Uh, the students evaluate how part of these, these elements separately, okay? The reservoir, the well, the, the producer well, the injector well, the the what the pump the separator so the idea is trying to to solve it together how um, how to how trying to obtain the answer um, um, for all elements at this at the same moment how uh, uh, um, any variation, for example, in terms of water cut affects our, uh, our water pump, our separator, our injection itself, or... So that is the idea, okay? Or how my uh, pressure in the pump is affected by my, uh, my uh, water saturation distribution in the, inside the reservoir. Eh? This kind of questions we can uh, answer. So we will re using the same base, basic concepts and tools using uh, the balance equation for mass, mechanical energy, energy, thermal energy, constitutive relations for phase behavior, and thermophysical properties, and <coughs> you can bring the, the concepts for our model we are already discussing in the previous uh, lectures. So, how to think an integrated model? Uh, model mathematically, the integrated petroleum production, uh, what you can, uh, how, how is a, one, one methodology to to do it is first break it in parts okay each part and his corresponding pressure drop describe the path of the petroleum inside the reservoir rising the production column crossing the wall head flowing by vertical and horizontal lines into surface into separators and other surface facilities okay the idea is broke each part um, 
if, uh, considering the, the, the pressure uh, that each part has your uh, respective pressure drop, okay? But remember, these uh, system components are dependent on each other, okay? So, exists an interaction uh, 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 between e uh, these elements, okay? Uh, it, it is one interesting discussion because um, in terms of uh, studies along the companies, generally uh, these parts are working um, or separately. Either, uh, there are a lot of studies in terms of reservoir, there is a lot of studies in terms of multi-phase flow in pipelines, there is a lot of studies in surface facilities, but generally we don't consider the, the, this dependence, okay? We, uh, we define some boundary conditions for each uh, model and try to evaluate his behavior. But in your case, we want to integrate all together, okay? and try to obtain uh, the behavior for each models operating together. Um, to, to guarantee the material balance of our system, uh, along the system, in any point, we need to guarantee that the flow, the mass flow um, that enter in this point Okay, are the same on the, on the outside of this point, so I need to guarantee the mass balance, okay? And I need to guarantee the difference of the pressure drop. Remember, I, uh, I will work with pressure, uh, pressure drop along the whole system. So in that point, I need to guarantee that what is, uh, what is possible to be delivered uh, above this point, it need to be the same. Uh, that uh, is the is the, the required pressure I need. If you remember in terms of uh, inflow performance relationship and tubing performance relationship, we have the same idea, okay? Or if you can, we could thinking about the DAO analysis, okay? We need to guarantee that the, the you have, you maintain the flow along your whole system and you need to maintain the pressure drop along your whole system. But how we can couple it again? I enjoyed the parts, okay? We use the concept of coupling points. Um, and these coupling points, um, we can use, depending uh, how you describe your model, how you implement it, we can include it in different points of my system. We can have a coupling point in, in the reservoir, connected from the uh, bottom, bottom hole of the well, I can use a couple point in the X3, in the, the top of the well, or I can consider a, a couple point in the, the surface facility, or even in another point inside your uh, integrated model. And what is important, remembering the mass need to be equal so long uh, the, the, the mass need to be maintained, okay, along this tubing, and the pressure drop need to be uh, maintained uh, also along this tubing. But we use this concept of open point, uh, depending how I, I implement this, the integration, to help us to include, for example, if I have a model, a specific model for the top sides that in implementing in a specific simulator, 
or a specific model, I, how I connected it with the tubing model and the reservoir model. I need to use that concept of coupling point. So, think about the, mathem the mathematics. That's the idea. If you remember all the equations we have described along this class, we have equations uh, related to the reservoir part in terms of uh, the flux uh, interblocks, okay, that correlate the mm, the delta of potential of the fluid correlate uh, permeability, viscosity of the fluids, density, uh, the geom uh, geom geometry of the grid blocks is correlated with the phases of, of each phase of the fluid, the, the rate the rate uh, part of uh, of the, the inside the uh, specific grid block and is equals to the the cumulative term of the equation and this uh, equation needs to be um, described for each block from my grid that represents the reservoir model. Okay, think about the amount of these uh, equations we need to describe the flow inside the reservoir. Okay, is the the great uh, is the the, ma uh, the major part of my uh, integrated model. But I have here um, a part of the pressure and the rate, so I need to continue. If you remember, I need we need to include a well model, okay? That correlates the pressure, the pressure, um, the, uh, the drawdown from the pressure of the block and the bottom hole pressure, and it is uh, a relationship that includes uh, permeability, the the, the thickness of the completion, fluid properties as viscosity and uh, formation factor. Uh, I need to include uh, the drainage area, the uh, well radius. Each yeah, and it is um, value for each completion. Okay, if you remember. Remember, we discussed a bit about it. So, if you remember, we um, talked about uh, the pressure drop inside the tubing and the flow line and the riser, uh, and we need to consider the, the pressure drop Consider gravitational aspects, friction along the tubing, and the all multi-phase flow aspects related for this. We can consider here uh, acceleration uh, changes in the cinetic velocity, uh, energy. Um, sometimes we can, uh, in the most of the time, you can uh, avoid this term. We need to consider um, the gas mass balance on the top side. I, we, we see the previous presentation. We included here the, the, uh, the power I need to to pump part of my fluid is I am injecting in, in here in the reservoir, but again, it is also related to pressure drop inside the tubing. 
I, I need to include comp uh, compressors, equations, and I need to include and, and in the final the the fuel gas equation to calculate how is my demand of fluid. Um, other point that is important is if I have um, some gathering systems in, in my uh, strategy, I need to solve this kind of problem that is related for network solver that correlate some similar points. And with this, I can, I can uh, verify pressure that are similar from uh, in certain points of my network. With these equations, I need to consider, I, I can describe my system. You were, if you try to imagine that it's a lot of uh, elements <clears throat> to be evaluated in my system. Okay, I have the reservoir part generally is described for these equations. I have multi-phase flow. I have these equations and that are simplified because if you remember it, uh, all aspects related to friction and multi-phase uh, flow. Um, this part is related to to the top sides, and I have a lot of equations to solve if I want to use the integrated model. Uh, together with these equations, I have all the parts that describe my fluid. I, I need to have a fluid model that describes um, all uh, fluid parameters as viscosity, um, solubility ratio, um, oil and BO, BG, and other relationships in terms of uh, the change of pressure and temperature and, and how it affects my fluids. We have other, other uh, flow, uh, fluid parameters that can be used here. Um, and depending how I describe my fluid, maybe I, it's interesting to use a full compositional description that I or I can use in a more simple evaluation, or if the, the behavior of my fluid allows me, I can use black model mod, uh, black oil models to <clears throat> represent my fluid. And of course, I have my constraints because. Um, Part of these or uh, of these variables I am I have here, I can have some constraint. For example, uh, one thing I could have in my platform is uh, energy limitation, a power limitation. So the energy I have to pump and to comp to pumps and compressors. Uh, could be lim limited by uh, some some uh, uh, generator capacity, or I can uh, maybe fix the capacity of fluid processing. For example, generally in reservoir simulation, we define oil. Maximum oil production, water production, liquid production, gas production, and so. But we are just talking about this part of the problem. But for an integrated model, I need to consider uh, not only from the, the, the this constraint from the reserve, but it. it 
becomes interesting to evaluate how that constraints affect the top sides, for example, in terms of um, your de uh, real demand, or I can change something in the top side can, that could increase my recovery. And, but generally, uh, the, the, these constraints are more related from uh, equipment. Of course, we have some problems in terms of flow assurance, as uh, as commented by Professor Baldi and Professor Marcel. And idea, <clears throat> the main idea behind this is I, I have this a lot of equations. Okay, I have. Um, I need to describe for each grid block wells I need to, for each completion, I need to specify this equation. For each segment, I broke my, my, my pipelines, I need to describe these equations. I need to include the pumps, the, the compressors. If I have turbines, I need to include. Um, for example, one study that that uh, would be interesting is if I have a certain amount of fuel that and that that could be burned and generate some CO two uh, emission. How is my how is the the, the, the behavior of my reserve? Because this amount of fuel affects my power, the power of the compression, pumping, and this affects uh, my recovery mechanism, affects my production. So that is the idea to integrate, to use the integrated model. Um, as other example, if I have some um, bottom, uh, some back pressure in my pipes, I can evaluate it here, some change in here to try to enhance my, my production. But in terms of mathematical approach, that is my integrated model, okay? That includes all models we have studied until now. Um, how to solve it? It's a good question. Because um, I will return here to show for you. I have some similar, um, some similar behavior in terms of the kind of equations. Um, also, in the for the reservoir, we have some derivatives from uh, for this the pipelines i have some derivatives too we have all um, we have non-linearities inside this model in these models okay especially for reservoir uh of course um, the top side uh, models we we have uh, a certain uh, linearity, okay. But this one point, an interesting point, we have some non-linearities in my model. Um, other thing that is interesting that we have some propagation of the variables. For example, the certain water I am injecting in my uh, in my reserve is correlated with the water and pumping. Okay, the same occurs with uh, the gas I'm producing. In certain well can be treated as the gas I am compressing, 
of course, here that is a, an interesting point. I, I don't. We need to consider um, each element of this part has your time, okay? It has your resolution time. For example, um, if I change something in a pump or a compressor, it's instantaneous the change about your behavior. Okay, if I change, if I change, for example, the, the rate of pumping instantaneously, the pressure change, the sorry, the, the power change. In terms of the tubing, is not so the reality because if you remember, uh, if you suppose the idea, I'm close a well, I shut in a well. Pressure changing will uh, propagate along the time the, 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 the tubing, uh, considering the, the sound velocity. So uh, it's not so slow, it's, it's fast. Okay. But if I compare it in terms of the reservoir, it is very fast, very, very fast. Because in terms of the reservoir, the changes are very slow comparing with the, the tubings, the, the, the top sides. So here, it's possible to observe the um, question related to the time resolution. Sometimes I want to have some refinement in terms of um, for example, I am shutting well, I want to observe how is the behavior in the, the pipes and in the top side. It can be very fast in terms of the reservoir, that don't, that feeling nothing, but in terms of uh, the pipes and the top side is very fast, okay? Is one kind of evaluation, and it is possible with integrated model, but the time aspect is different. Generally, for the use of integrated model from uh, the uh, the field forecasting, we use the this kind of integrated model that um, consider the time and. Uh, important from the reservoir and for the pipes and the top side it, it's a permanent regime okay it's each change don't we don't uh, take account uh, uh, changes the, the effects in, in our simulations okay let's talk now how to solve the, this uh, this problem uh, to simplify it uh, we use the solution uh, for the reservoir parts and it is is similar from the other parts okay um, we, we when we describe it uh, numerically because it's a mathematical problem to use the computational uh, uh, capacity to solve this kind of problem. We turn it in a numerical problem and we have a system of equations. And how is the idea? We take this uh, system of equations and Let's assume for a reservoir because uh, it's, it's, it's easy to, uh, to understand. I have primary variables uh, called X uh, for black oil. Um, then how is the, these uh, variables? Uh, in of using the full, the, the full description of my solving, I have the 
the oil pressure, I have the water saturation, and I have the gas saturation. Uh, if I use impulse when I use the pressure and the implicit, the, and the saturation as explicit, um, I, I have just the, the oil pressure as a primary variable. And I rewrote, I, I rewrote my, sorry, I rewrite my equations that correlate the flow uh, interblocks, the cumulative term, and the the source and sink term in a residual in a form of a residual equation okay if you remember i have a part of the, the of these terms in the, the, the left side and other part in the, the right side i bring the cumulative term that is common to stay here to this part to obtain a zero here, to obtain a, a, a residual equation that I want to obtain zero. If I obtain zero, I obtain the solution of this equation. Okay. Um, and to solve this kind of residual equation, you can use some iterative process. The most common is Newton Hudson. And starting with certain um, uh, certain set of primary variables, I use uh, a Jacobian matrix to iterate and to iteratively obtain uh, the difference of my uh, primary var uh, variables. Okay. I need to build a Jacobian to, to allow this, this kind of, uh, uh, solve this kind of process, but it's very efficient, um, especially because um, um, in terms of non, uh, problems with non-linear uh, linearities, it's very interesting and very efficient to obtain very, uh, very fast solutions for our system and the idea is to obtain some um, set of uh, primary variables that my whole um, residual equations uh, need to be zero. So when I touch this, I solve my problem. Um, so that's it. And so how is the idea to rewrote all these equations as the residual equations and iteratively solve this, this part, the, these equations. One point that is interesting here that these equations, uh, how is a iterative problem is very difficult to obtain some zero point. So, uh, it's common to define some uh, residual um, convergence tolerance to my solvers that are implemented in the simulators to, to stop my convergence. Okay, that is an interesting point to evaluate. But um, we generally obtain very good results uh, using this kind of approach. How is the, 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 the idea from the, uh, uh, this, this system solution, the, the system, okay? Um, now considering uh, not only the reservoir, but considering well that is related to the pipes and considering the facilities. So I need to, to build a Jacobian matrix that correlate the derivatives from 
the residual equation for each variable, uh, for each component, yeah, I can group in the same uh, uh, part of my equations, and I describe in these terms. I have some derivatives of the residual of whatever equations rel uh, relative to the variables of primary uh, uh, variables of the reservoir. I have um, some derivatives related to the residual equations for reservoir from the well, the well variables, the same for facilities, and I, for and all combinations I can I I can build my Jacobian. Okay? Multiplying by the all of the question, the all of the uh, primary variables, I obtain the residual. And remember, I want to reduce these residuals to zero. Okay? And using the iterative process, I can solve this kind of problem. Of course, it's very complicated to, to, to solve. We can assume some simplifications to speed up this kind of problem. Uh, for example, we can, um, assuming no direct interaction between facility and the reserve, so these terms become zero, this term as and this term. And I can broke the problem in two. And it's, uh, I can do some uh, iterative process again to solve these parts separately. That is now questions about uh, numerical simulation. Uh, sorry, numerical com uh, computation. Okay, but what is interesting for us? We have a, a, a big matrix. I need to solve it using some method. I need to solve this using again numerical methods to obtain all the, the solutions together. Um, I think that is okay. I think I will finish with this uh, slide from from our break. Um, all these discussions bring us for an integrated model, and we need to consider uh, some aspects that are related to to how to solve these equations in here. How to, to build these equations, how to couple these equations. Because I need to verify how I uh, do my coupling. If you remember, I, I, I can have different models. How I couple these models? Uh, uh, surface and subsurface models. When I located these, these coupling models, how I synchronize this time step between these models. For example, if I have different reservoirs with different um, times uh, volumes, one, one reservoir could produce more fast in terms of solution than the other. How to synchronize it between the different models? Uh, one one thing that is very important is how to treat different fluids and different fluid models from uh, these mo the models from the reservoir, different uh, reservoir models, the network models, how I co could consider it. And how apply global restrictions for production injection for all, all parts of my system. These elements direct us the choices in terms of the numerical integrated model. I will start about the numerical integration, but I think we can uh, did a, a bit break for for 
for now. What do you think, Professor Mohart? That's okay. It's up to you. I think uh, it's a good idea to to make a little break for, let's say, 10 minutes. I don't know. Yes, what yes. Okay, we have to finish at uh, by, uh, by 4, right? Yes, yes. yes. So a uh, 10 minute break is, is good. Vinicius also agree, Natalia. <laughs> so uh, 10 minute break. We'll be back. Okay. So uh, 15, uh, 3, 306. <clears throat>
So everybody's back. Can we, uh, okay. So uh, we don't have any questions for this part, but we, I think John can answer any questions if you have it now regarding, regarding the equations. Uh, I don't know if everything was clear and we can proceed, John can proceed, or should we discuss any, any question, any doubt, any issue regarding the equations? <clears throat> Nope. So, uh, João, uh, you can proceed. Okay, Professor, thank you. Uh, we, of course, uh, I, I talk much about the question of the solver, and, and because the idea is to, to give to the, the, the students the idea behind the scenes, what uh, happened in terms of the numerical integration. Uh, because what uh, is more common in the industry, we have some integrated simulators, not from the, the, the whole B, the whole system, but we have some, some possibilities to integrate different simulators. I will show in the next slides. But the idea is to, to bring to the students what occurs behind the scenes, okay? And understand what is happening in terms of integration. So let's talk uh, a bit about numerical integration. Um, how I integrate, for example, it's a case we have used in Unisim, he also group of Reserve simulation in Unica uh, inside Sepetro. How I can integrate the behavior of this reserve here and this reserve together, producing for a same platform. How I can um, guarantee that we I am sharing the, the, the global capacities of this platform. Uh, from each reservoir and how I can obtain, for example, uh, the, the total CO2 emission from this platform. Um, we find interesting that the tail, the fluid of this reservoir is very different from this reservoir. How I can do it? Okay, considering all the aspects related to the reservoir, uh, behavior, the pressure drop inside the tubings, the pipes, net, and the capacity of the platform. Um, so, being the, we need to start with an integrated computational model. I told a bit uh, uh, before, but is a model that apply uh, numerical uh, uh, solvers to integrate different models uh, that describes the reservoir, the well, production system, and want, and we want to obtain the, the, the answers for all the system together. So reservoir, wells, gathering system, top side facilities. And what you will verify in the, what is uh, available for us in terms of solution, Merkel solutions in the, in the market. Um, we have basically three um, methodologies that uh, can give us uh, the possibility to numerical coupling of integrated models. We have the decoupled form, the explicit coupled, and implicit coupled. Uh, 
And the couple form is the, the, the first approach that the, the petroleum industry has the opportunity to use. We obtain integration between the dynamic simulation of the reservoir and the producer system uh, through the exchange of data in, in, in the form of tables of data files containing uh, phase flow information for pipes or IPR curves from the reservoir. Um, and the idea is one part of my system is fixed and I can use it to uh, to do the forecast of the other uh, simulations is, is uh, the people that use um, uh, reservoir simulation is common the, the the philosophy of using vertical lift uh, curves of um, phase flow tables uh, when data are usually produced for wells of different reservoirs using um, data, uh, data in terms of the behavior from these reservoir simulators. And we can um, pass this information from the production system simulator. We can calculate some parameters that are important for the reserve simulation uh, included this data as a table inside the reserve simulation and do our forecast from the field. Um, of course, the, the, the forecast quality is closely linked to the quantity of the data uh, in these tables. How is the idea? We have a first estimation of the behavior of the, the, the reservoir using a standalone reservoir simulation. It's, a, it's, it's just the reserve equations. Um, we pass this information for um, a production system simulator that uh, define for us the behavior of the tubing. We convert this information in a vertical lift performance table, include these tables inside the reserve simulation, and we can do our reserve simulation run. Okay? Uh, and we consider that the time of integration occurs only at the end of the run. Okay? How is the problem of this uh, kind of solution. Yeah. This kind of tends to limit the amount of projects and conceptual scenarios that be, can, be, can be considered in the planning phase. Because how we need how we need to bring information from one reservoir to other reservoir, it involves uh, the, 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 the man hour of um, uh, engineering areas to calculate and stable to send from the other uh, discipline to simulate to returning. So it's a bit complicated to use this kind of solution. Uh, other problematic aspect in this methodology is uh, I need to guarantee consistency between the physical properties. Uh, for example, the fluid properties calculations between these both simulators because it's not a direct connection. So uh, we need to, to guarantee, um, part of guarantee this kind of solution. But it, took, it has been used traditionally by the oil industry in the planning phase of a project for the prediction of oil and gas production is a very common uh, approach. Um, is very useful to, to, to 
obtain the, the behavior of the reservoir, considering, for example, the pressure drop inside the pipes. But this kind of problem in terms of consistent in, in physical properties or even uh, aspects related to the fluid can be uh, avoided the use of this kind of solution. Because if I have a certain time of simulation, when the fluid are changing, I need along the simulation, I, it's complicated to, to, to use this kind of solution because I need to run again the same uh, simulation to include new tables with different uh, fluids and run a bit more in terms of the reserve simulation, verify if they change the fluids, if it change return from this step to, to calculate the production system. So it's complicated, independent, independent on the scenario, use this kind of simulation. And if I want to consider, for example, uh, some spe specific top side process, I cannot do it using this kind of approach because certain uh, processes in the platform are so complicated to be included in, in, in this kind of solution. Um, this is the idea to try to solve it. Um, one approach that uh, can be used is the split coupling form when multiple simulators are connected in an auto automated process where each simulates one or more parts of a field. So I can have different simulators for different reservoirs. I can have simulators specific for the top sides. I can have simulation simulators from the pipelines and I can connect these um, simulators in one um, automated process, okay? So what is important here is, is the definition of the coupling points, define where one simulator coupling with other, okay? The data exchange between the simulators is automated uh, through standard interfaces or methods to share files in the default repository. Uh, it makes possible to combine different simulators for specific studies. Uh, it's very common in the industry to use a third-party software for modeling surface facilities processing that's very, uh, is, that are very complicated to show, uh, to, to uh, it's almost impossible to included in the, all the rigorous uh, physics inside the reserve simulator or other kind of <coughs> approach. And it provides um, a great flexibility in the study of alternatives and, and uh, for management groups. It's very interesting because we can define, for example, different ways to um, to apply the, the well management for platforms and um, it's possible uh, it's a, it's a it's something new in the in, in the industry the integration with uh, proxies that are uh, uh, models are, are uh, that are models uh, mathematical models simpler models that represents the behavior of a, a, a huge model. A complex, uh. So how is the idea in this kind of approach? We have different reservoirs, uh, different reservoirs models. We have different production system simulators. And we have a, a coupler, that's a software that did the management of the, informa the information changing between the simulators. 
and the integration time is, is set during the integrated run. This is a very interesting approach to join different reservoir simulators and uh, different production systems. Simulators um, to obtain uh, a whole integrated model. Uh, what is the questions for this kind of solution? It's dependent of the consistent between the interfaces, dependent of the controller software, and the represent the representation dependency of the physical properties in each simulation. It is important to consider. And, and of course, some inconsistence of the iterative network between the different calculation simulators. Uh, it need to be evaluated to avoid problems in terms of the coupling between the different simulators. And the last option, uh, it could be more obvious for, uh, for anything, is um, use the implicit coupling form that is a single simulator used to perform the complete simulation which has the ability to represent all parts consistently. It's more obvious. Oh, let's put all equations together. How is the problem? It increases a lot the computational time. OK? Um, because if I run all equations in each time step, in each moment, it, it tends trends uh, uh, increase the computational time of the problem, of the, the, the solution of my integrated model. Uh, but how is the idea? But one thing that is interesting is all ruler equations are solved in the same structure, eliminating the need of connectivity or data transfer between different simulators. Um, uh, depending on the how it's implemented, we can uh, reach a rigorous treatment for compositional phenomena and stability for the implicit method uh, along the, the, the time step advance. It is a, a point that is interesting from this kind of solution. So the idea is to include to include all together in the same simulator and solve all equations together. The input data become more consistent between the reservoir simulation model and the surface network, can reduce time, the time to, to simulate integrated field in terms of avoid the, the time spent between changing the, the the model between the the disciplines, the engineering disciplines inside the the, the company. Uh, but how is is the interaction between models with different formulations? It's an interesting point here. Um, you cannot reach convergence for all complex system uh, variables. Uh, sometimes you can have some problems in turn to obtain the rich convergence of your system. Okay, it, it needs to be well implemented in the simulators to avoid this kind of problem. Uh, some formulation embedded, uh, embedded inside the, the simulator may not be suitable for a given study. For example, if I want to calculate some top side demands um, from the, the simulators available, the implicit simulators available on the market, uh, some, uh, it, some physics are not being implemented uh, inside the simulator. So the idea you can use uh, a split uh, or the approach to calculate it. And don't reuse production system results from previous steps. What is interesting in terms of 
um, efficiency of the the the, so, the system so okay uh, of course uh, different simulators we have here the the main simulators available in the market to have your um, uh, different approaches the changing uh, oscillating between the, the couple the explicit implicit um, some uh, there are some uh, options inside the, the this simulator that allowed part of uh, these aspects. For example, uh, some implicit simulators start to allow some decoupled uh, data or using some explicit coupling. The idea is allow some uh, more uh, not only to to solve equations, but is related to how to connect with different solvers and different simulators. Okay, but this is the, 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 the main software available in the market. Um, and I will finish my presentation, talk about some applications of the integration. <clears throat> uh, the, the first, I think is the first, uh, application for integrations is the final of the production strategy including production system definitions for example um, not only define the, the the number of wells uh, well placement the limits of the platform platform um, Should, uh, the time for shutting wells or how long for sh uh, shutting time wells or well opening but i i need to define for example uh the pipe uh geometry the pipe diameters how is the artificial lift method the platform position so for this kind of study i need to integrate to correlate adequately questions related to reservoir in terms of number of wells, number of position, and aspects related from the production system. For example, platform position, manifold position, um, gas lift or, or ESP method, and uh, Evaluating this kind of uh, approach, we can uh, did studies, for example, relating the recovery of the method, uh, the, the rec economic recovery of the project, related to the, 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 the geometrical parameters of the pipes, the platform position, and other, um, other uh, variables related from the production strategy. Okay, uh, the second um, example in terms of integration is related to multiple reservoirs uh, producing for uh, the, the same platform that are shared in platforms. Uh, if a global constraint, uh, and even we can, especially nowadays, the use of uh, subsurface networks, some surface equipment, and what we can obtain here is a mixing of different fluids along the subsea system. Okay, not only questions related to platform uh, well management, but uh, also the mix and guarantee problems in terms of uh, flow insurance along this these uh, pipe and uh, these pipes doing the mixture of the fluids um, and how to pure, uh, define the prioritization um, sequence of production of these fields how we produce first how I, I how I 
um, the fine my injection uh, my injection planning if I have some limitations on my platform okay so uh, again it's important to, to take account the, the mix of fluids inside these uh, facilities uh, for uh, this is a important um, uh, st uh, important keys for integration approaches. Uh, one uh, integration problem that is very interesting is if I have external balanced surface network model, it's a very complicated network model integrated with uh, some facilities um models for example like separators and uh, maybe compressors connected to reservoir models and i need to try to maximize the production of uh, a specific fluid or uh, an injection of uh, undesired fluid so how to obtain how to manage this kind of reserve? I need to verify all aspects related to the pressure, not only in the reserve, but along my system. I need to consider the separation of my fluids, and it affects a lot the behavior of different wells along the reserve. Okay, that is one interesting approach to consider. Uh, the integration. Um, other point that is interesting here, uh, other kind of integration, is uh, it, it is for a, a onshore field. Okay, when I have the facilities uh, onshore, but uh, we we have some cases when I have subsurface network models for example uh, uh, subsurface um, gas and uh, sorry uh, i have João? yes tem uh, algumas perguntas e eu acho que levantaram a mão acho que bom vai se você quer deixar para o final ou quer falar agora eu vou deixar para o final eu já estou terminando tô... tá ah, ok ok um, in this kind of problem, I have um, some equipments in the subsea, and I need, I want to separate fluids that are flowing from the reservoir, do some separation and the subsurface, and part of this fluid. I send to the top sides, and part of this fluid I reject in the the the, the, the reserve. In this case, uh, I need to include a, a specific subsurface network model to consider this separation and reinjection um, in the reserve. Okay, it's a kind of study that is uh, interesting to uh, evaluate use integration and uh, i think it's the last the last uh, integration uh, i um, study is when i want to to evaluate the energy demo and the carbon emission forecast from oil production, oil and gas production. Uh, it's the idea to use a calc, for example, to calculate how is the, the power demand of certain uh, production of my, uh, my, system, my production system, okay, in terms of power, in terms of full demand and CO2 emission. But uh, I, I could evaluate this 
uh, energy demand as a restriction. So I need to integrate my uh, my my for example, a, a software like a calc to limit to to implement to impose a restriction in my platform to limit the 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 power demand or to, or to optimize my power demand and minimize my full demand allow me to produce uh, to maximize my production but honoring my restriction in terms of uh, carbon emission okay I finished my my presentation in terms of integration uh, for this, the students uh, I have the challenge is very simple okay but um, I think I I, I, I finish for here I I included this this presentation in the in the model to do the to allow the students to verify it and I will I think I have questions I stop to share my screen and answer the the questions I think that's a lot <laughs> Yeah, there are some, um, a few questions. Uh, <clears throat> Hahila, uh, I, I don't know Hahila if I pronounce your name correctly, but she's, uh, uh, oh, else. Hahila, can you uh, turn on your mic and state your question aloud, please? Okay. Yeah. Um, first thing first, you spell uh, you, you pronounce my name very correct. <laughs> it's very rare, but you did it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the second one um, about my question. Um, yeah. I was interested about the coupling of uh, softwares or integration of the software, like in petrol, you used to have integration of other softwares with it. Um, so if, our, if, if we are talking about ECAG, if we want to couple it with another software and we have interface, do we need to check? Uh, or, is, or is it that easy that we don't need to check? Is it, is it, is it uh, easy to couple? Is it easy to integrate? Or it, it has to pass certain prerequisite uh, so that we can say, yes, it can be coupled. Okay, thank for your question. Um, every software uh, can be integrated. Um, the question is um, depends. Um, for example, if um, the, okay, I will assume you need to have some interface. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You need to have some yes. interface that allows the coupling. Yes. Okay. For example, the reserve simulator mm -hmm. uh, needs to be interface that allows along the simulation to, to do this this integration. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to, to because integration, remember the integration is one simulator interfering another software. That's mm -hmm. the, 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 the point. Uh, if use a calc as a post processor, mm. I obtain the curves using some reserve simulator and use the e calc as a post processor. It's like a decoupled simulation. You fix it, the results and apply for a for a calc. Okay. But if I want to use a calc to limit my production along the simulation, yeah. Yeah, that was my question. Okay, uh, this the, the simulator needs to uh, give you some interface. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the the actual simul reserve simulators has this interface. Okay. For example, try to it's possible to integrate 
a calc with uh, IMAX uh, from CMG. It's possible to connect a calc with OPM. Um, uh, is possible? I don't, I'm not sure if it's possible. It's directly okay. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if it's possible to connect with Eclipse from Schlumberger. Mm. Uh, and I think it's possible to connect with um, other couplers. Okay. Uh -huh. you know? Uh, for example, uh, result, uh, the, the IPM suite from Petron Experts. I think that's possible to connect the cock. Okay, but again, you need to have the interface. Interface, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You explained. It for you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question from Vinicius. Vinicius, what time of uh, what it means about key C, please. Ah, it's a, it's a quality control. Yeah, it's a okay, quality control. Quality ah, okay, okay. Um, uh, if you remember, when you uh, calculate the table, you need to enter with fluid properties and uh, rates, uh, uh, liquid rate, uh, you can use, for example, water cut um, to cor correlate with water rate and liquid rate, uh, some uh, GOR, a gas lift. Uh, so I think uh, you need to verify how is the uh, how is the the rates you are obtained along the simulation to verify if this range are touched by the table? There are uh, inserted inside. Um, if you use some artificial uh, lift method, you need to verify again. For example, gas lift, you need to have the the the, the numbers of gas lift. The idea is to avoid the simulator to extrapolate numbers, okay? But uh, what is the, 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 the big problem? If your fluid composition, uh, composition change along the simulation, if you are using black, uh, uh, for example, uh, black oil model in a IMAX or Eclipse simulation, simulator, it's very difficult to change your fluid density or fluid composition. Okay, so you can use the 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 coupling approach. is 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 sufficient. It's, it's enough for for your case. But you can evaluate the fluid composition. Okay, if you are using Max, it's not a problem. Okay, or using uh, black oil simulators. Except if you use some condensate options, and sometimes you can use. But the idea is verify the fluid in terms of if you are changing your composition or not. You can verify the density. It's the first idea for you, and verify the step. The if your range of rates, pressures, and and artificial lift parameters are inside the table. Avoid this separation because it can, that some simulators is not so so good for separation. Okay. Um, but if, if you touch this kind of problem, my fluid are changing. I think in some uh, fields in your in Equinor, you have this kind of uh, effect. You are producing, you are injecting gas, you are producing uh, more light oil. You need to verify if you need to change the tables. Okay? 
um, and you can select another approach to do it uh, to, to, to use this kind of uh, solution. Okay, I think that is the, 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 the main points related to is to select this kind of coffee. Of course, depending on the mode. Okay, if you want to integrate with now it's complicated, for example, to, to to integrate the facilities, and then on the software you cannot implement. Okay, for example, some mem uh, some molecular filters. You can do some simplification, but depends on your case. Okay, I think that is. Uh, I have what the, uh, another question is: What software I use for the subsurface network model? Um, uh, some implicit uh, simulators, as Nexus, um, uh, Nexus, Kuflow. Uh, There's other simulator. The implicit simulator in general has the, the capacity to to model subsurface and network models. Okay, in terms of implicit simulations. Uh, for explicit simulations, um, the main vendors of this kind of solution has your own network uh, model. Uh, software that allow to to not only to model the subsurface and to solve the network model okay for example uh, the petroleum expert suite has the gap that is a a network um, software that you can model a, a subsurface net, uh, network model inside this uh, that, mm, I think that uh, the, the all uh, network, uh, all vendors that use implicit or explicit can modulate subsurface. In the, the corporate simulation, it's uh, it's not possible to to simulate a subsurface network because the reservoir cannot uh, you uh, the, the equations. If you remember the equations of the integrated model, part of these equations need to be passed from the subsidies and this, the, the, this kind of simulator cannot, don't have these equations implemented, okay? You can do some simplifications to obtain some, um, some initial steps, but the idea is you want to simulate the subsea network models, apply some implicit simulators or use explicit simulators. It's kind of solution. Uh, I think I have one other question now. How would be the number of pseudo components? It's a very good question. Because um depends. depends because uh, if you remember we talk about the model of the fluid inside the, in the integrated model uh, of course the best the best world is considered the same model from the whole system is the best model okay but um, it's very complicated to consider uh, the same number of subcomponents from the whole system because uh, part of your system uh, requires different aspects of the fluid behavior is one question 
one aspect, sorry. Uh, other aspect is how, if I increase the number of pseudo components, the simulation, the, sim the, uh, the whole simulator uh, is more complicated to solve. Okay. Um, especially for the reserve part. Okay. Uh, what happens in, in, in general, you use different models for each part of your system. This is a more common approach. If you use the, the minimum number of pseudo components in your reservoir to represent the phenomena inside the reservoir, um, the same are for the, the the multi-phase flow along the pipes and generally are less than and is a, a lower number that you use in uh, uh, to calculate the, the the fluid behavior along the two the, the tubing and the process the, the process simulator generally use the full the full number of pseudo components because there's a lot of thermal effects, a lot of uh, behavior, uh, uh, thermal effects, uh, uh, inter uh, interaction between the components that are important to um, integrate to the process facilities. Uh, so, how is the idea? Try to adequate for each model the, the number of pseudo components you have uh, in your fluids. Uh, some applications do it for you automatically, other uh, options don't do it automatically for you. It depends how your software we are using. Uh, but the idea is. Uh, we have some possible. Um, you need to try to, to to adequate the fluid for your um, simulator part. Okay. Uh, how much time this type of models used to take? A lot, a lot. Depending uh, how is your problem. For example, um, I'm running a uh, a case with two reservoirs sharing from one platform I spend four hours uh, I, I solve simulate, simulation using six uh, reservoir models taking one day simulator, depending of your case okay um Thank you for Davini has a lot about uh, output input from compressor. And I have one question. Are data from crude assays in the process fluid properties? And I think that's a good, a good, a good uh, answer, uh, say, because um, generally you don't have this data. Okay, uh, what what do you think about crude assays? Because generally you have data from uh, PVT from the lab. Okay, but generally in terms of. Uh, pressure and temperature from the reservoir. Uh, generally, use this data to calibrate the models for to use in um, to use in subsea uh, subsurface models. Use the same. Of course, you extrapolate the, 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 some data because you need to consider the, the uh, a different temperature. Um, uh, it's 
you generally use it, okay? You have some, because you, you have some data from the reservoir, okay? You have some PDT data from the reservoir. You get uh, a model from this, uh, uh, fluid model from this uh, fluid, and you use this to uh, extrapolate data to the subsurface. Um, I think you use, you could use some distillation cuts from uh, process models, but it's, it's bad. Um, but it's not, in, it's common you have the PVT data from a reservoir too. Okay, it's not in common to have, especially from normal fields. Uh, for the researchers, I, I I am with you in terms of sometimes we don't have the whole full data. You, you need to use, for example, some correlations, analytical correlations as extending or something like that to, to extrapolate the behavior of the fluid. Okay, if you have more questions about it, uh, please let me know, send an email, you can discuss a bit more about how to uh, work with this kind of problem. Okay, so I think uh, we'll, we are uh, sharp on time, right? <laughs> Two minutes ahead. Um, yeah, so yes. thank you very much, uh, João Carlos, thank you everyone for the attendance and questions. That's uh, the best way to improve the courses for us professors is to have your feedback and suggestions to, for the next uh, times we will offer this course. It will be uh, better and better. Well, thank you very much. See you, uh, hope to see you tomorrow morning uh, at 8 a.m. with the le second lecture, lecture by uh, Fro and the Kinar about uh, using eCalc integrated with the drainage problem. So thank you very much. Uh, see you tomorrow. Uh, uh, Professor Bavart, remember that is in the, te the Teams link. The link was, yes. The link for tomorrow morning is the Teams link. It was already sent to you. Uh, please check your email. And uh, the second, uh, the, the class uh, by uh, uh, Dr. Juan Carlos uh, will be the same as, uh, as before. So the lead, lead uh, link, right? So the only change, uh, change was in the link, the team link for tomorrow morning, morning 8 a.m. Okay. See you. Goodbye. <laughs>